Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Let's Roleplay Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, Dusk's Tale. We're here with Dusk at around 4.30 in the morning on this rainy, rainy, well, night that we've spent indoors, uh, having made it back with a number of new bits and pieces, this cart included. Now, a lot of the stuff is going to have to be repaired. We've actually got a welding rig over here from the portable one that we found in the town. We've gone and organized everything around here at the same time. So I'm pretty happy with how things are here at this stage, but we are going to try to repair some of this equipment. So for now, let's go ahead and just put our bow back into our pack here and we see maybe if we're able to repair some of this. So we are going to need to, a electronics control unit to actually be able to control this thing. And we're going to have to go grab our welding goggles, which should be in tools, I believe. Well, we'd hope, or the mask, the welding mask, I believe we had. Uh, no, not a mouse. That's uh, a filter mask. We definitely have one around here somewhere. It's just a question of where. A welding mask. Fantastic. So as long as we've got that in our inventory, we'll be good to go. Let's just uh, close things up while we're working on this. And we'll see if we can't repair this here. Uh, we are going to get pretty tired while working on this. But uh, I think we should be able to do this without too much trouble. So, yeah. Electronics con electronics control unit will need a little bit of extra work and I think yeah we've lit we've just about lost sight um, let's see we might not need our headlamp because I guess once we start welding we'll be we'll be good let's have a look uh, so we can't re maybe we can't repair too dark to see what you're doing okay well we should have some extra batteries for our headlamp. We're down to nine at the moment. So, what the hell? Let's just go for a little bit longer, if we can, if it'll let us try and repair this. Uh, and no, it won't actually, because I think the storage battery would have to be removed before we can do any kind of repairing to it. Yeah. So, I'm not sure if it's draining now, or if it's because the small storage battery is damaged. I think this might be one of the scenarios where we have to make the small storage battery again because of the damage it's taken. Thinking that's probably the case. So let's just go ahead and drag that along for now. Uh, if we have an extra frame, we'll be able to add the welding rig onto this. And we've got an actual other mini fridge that we can add onto that as well. Uh, and apparently another small storage battery, which I think this one's fine. So what the hell, let's go ahead and install that one now, which I think was installed here. Yes, easy. And it actually does have a tiny bit of charge to it as well. So the next step for us is going to be creating a small, well, small storage battery for one, but uh, we need to make an electronics control unit as well. I'm just going to go ahead and open up this so that uh, it looks like daylight is here. So we'll try and use that if we can. We're probably just going to have to wait a little bit longer. We can slowly see it starting to creep into here. So yeah, we are tired. We're probably going to have to sleep through the day, I think. Let's just check on our right arm. Is that still bandaged? It is. Okay, good. Yes. And hopefully in time we're going to be able to make our way back towards the Migo encampment because, yeah, it's not easy being away from that space. And another goal that I really do want to try and achieve, perhaps even in today's episode, is making our way across towards this radio tower here to see if we can't climb up it to get a view of the surrounding towns because uh, just knowing what is available to us will make a big difference and even just seeing what's going on with the shipwreck here as well. We'll have to cross over the river to do it but uh, that won't be too difficult of a task I think. I would like to do that while we aren't tired though. Have a proper sleep if we can. And there we go. We got the light that we need. So let's see if we were to try and make a electronics control unit. So we could just go control. What do we need to get you going? We need scrap 
pretty much. We need to take apart some electronics. Amplifier circuits and five electronic scraps. Okay, well, let's actually head over towards here and see if we can't take anything apart in here. I mean, they don't really have much in the way of electronics in this building, but uh, the safe, because it's open, I wonder whether or not we can deconstruct it. We cannot deconstruct this, and that kind of makes sense, because then you could just kind of get into them easily enough. We've got a uh, recharging station here, and we, we actually have some things that we can probably take apart. Uh, flashlights being one of them. Whether or not we'll actually get some electronic scrap from them, I guess we'll see. Now, can we dis... Yeah, we can. Disassemble. Excellent. What do we have on the ground now? Amplifier circuits, we've got some scrap metal, and a light strip. Okay, so we might be able to take that apart further. Okay, well, I'm going to take all of them apart for now, just so that we have some scrap to work with. Go for the next. They don't seem to take all that long to actually take apart. And like that. Okay, now, let's see. I'm going to grab these light strips and see if we can't do anything with them. We can't disassemb disassemble you, but uh, if we go ahead and drop you, we might be able to just cut them up. Um, hmm, no, but if we, yeah, if we cut up just one of the amplifier circuits, I wonder whether or not we'll get electronic scrap from that. We do need an amplifier circuit, so we're probably going to try and hold on to that for now. Five electronic scraps and five plastic chunks. Plastic chunks, again, easy for us to do. We just need to grab some of the plastic bottles that we'll have left over. And more than likely in here, yep, a lot of plastic bottles. Let's just go and grab four of those for now in the hopes that we're going to be able to get what we want from them. So, plastic bottles, drop you on the ground, and let's go ahead and cut up those plastic bottles. We get two plastic chunks. There we go. That's the four that we need. We can just leave them here for now because we can place everything away with our sorting. Uh, but that's that. I believe it was just four, or was it six? I could be completely incorrect. Uh, it was five. Okay, so we just need one more lot, and then the electronic scrap to follow that. Okay, that's that. So, what can we scrap to get that electronic scrap from? We do have the MP3 player there, which we haven't really used too much. It does really help with our mood, so it's nice to have at least one. We've got a smartphone here. That one we're not actually holding onto. Yeah. Let's see. Well, we can't exactly see what we're going to get if we disassemble it. But if we just page down, we should be able to uh, make that out. Scrap metal, processor board. So I think from the processor board, we might be able to get electronic scrap. So let's go ahead and disassemble that for now. And see if we can't cut up the... Yeah, this here. We got a plastic chunk. Well, we couldn't. What about the LCD screen? Hmm... We tried to salvage some things from it, but just not getting anything. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. The amplifier circuit is something that might give us what we want, but I also don't want to get rid of all of them. So let's just take one for now and just have a little bit of a little bit of a look at it. It will give us ah, there we go. Three electronic scrap. Okay, well let's go ahead and disassemble you. Several items drop onto the ground. All right, we're one step closer to being able to control this thing. Uh, so we've got three at the moment, so we just need to do that one more time. We've got enough um, of them kicking about here. So cut up amplifier circuit. Okay, probably not what we want to do. We want to try and dismantle them. We've got one left, so let's hope that this one is going to be successful, because we need at least one. And we have several items on the chair. Are we lucky enough to succeed this time? And let's try and actually type control properly. Yes, fantastic. It's going to take us an hour to make it. So we'll see how we're feeling after this. We're definitely going to have to have something to eat, but we have an electronic control unit. Excellent work, Dusk. She's pretty handy with, uh, well, <laughs> a lot of things, really. Uh, so we're going to go repair and swap that out for the new one. 
and now we have ourselves a working food vendor cart. So that has the mini fridge on it and it also has a kitchen unit as well, which also has storage, which is very, very handy. We can store our non-perishable goods on here and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. However, we do need to power this some way. So the small storage battery that's on there, we could find a way to charge that. Ideally, what we'd end up doing is just sticking a solar panel on this thing and just leaving it outside for a while. And uh, you know what? That might actually be something that we can do. Let's head over towards our car, which is <laughs> rather beaten up um, I wouldn't mind trying to repair parts of this car <laughs> um, let's just have a look at the solar panels to see how they're doing that one's completely fine that one's com that's gone that one's fine and that one's fine as well so look maybe maybe we take one of these solar panels and we try and install it on our uh, little thing here so let's just try and install it on top of the fridge if we can looks like we can do that it's going to take 41 minutes uh we are dead tired but we are going to try and keep this up the sun is going to irritate us quite a bit come on let's see and there we go we have attached a solar panel to our little food cart so that should start bringing in power yeah there we go two hours until full so we're just going to go and drag that on over towards the building we're going to leave it here, and uh, we're going to see if we can't get ourselves a little bit of sleep, a little bit of shut-eye while we're here. Um, I'm just going to do a quick organize, so let's just turn on this for a second, and we'll sort out our loot. Okay, looks like we're done. Excellent. Dead tired, thirsty, and very hungry. So we can have a few things to eat and drink before we actually turn in because we should have a few over here okay so let's see uh we could just have some apple cider to help so we'll start off some juice how are we feeling okay that's our thirst dealt with i think we're going to be good to have a little bit of a sleep mind you it's not gonna be a comfy sleep sleeping on the sleeping bag it would be good for us to actually try and sleep on a bed of some kind or even a chair i think would be better so I'm half tempted to just drag this armchair into here for now because sleeping on the ground is quite difficult to do. Something that I kind of uh, forgot is a thing. Uh, can I grab the sleeping bag and put it on there? I don't seem to be able to. I think we can just pick it up for now. So let's drag you up the top and we will drop the sleeping bag on the floor. There we are. Excellent. Okay, so let's see if we can't try and sleep in here. Are you sure you want to sleep? Uh, yes, and we will save before sleeping. We're not going to set an alarm. And uh, let's see if we can't fall asleep. Toss and turn. And I think I accidentally told us to uh, stop trying. And there we go. We use our sleeping bag to stay warm. And our arm is healed up, so I'll see you all once dusk has awoken and we're ready to embrace the day, or probably in this case, the evening. All right, it is 7.50 p.m. and we have just woken up. And, uh, well, yeah, let's see how our vehicle has done. There's a little bit of sunlight left and, uh, yeah, 100% battery. So we have ourselves a working fridge, which I don't know how long that is going to stay charged for but while we're not here we can just leave this thing outside that's totally an option for us uh, so let's see we kind of want to try and shift all of our perishable foods out so that we can move them into here now so it's going to take a little bit just to move th things about but as you can see we actually don't have all that much in the way of uh, perishable foods anyway mostly toastums which tend to last for quite a long time but we want to go ahead and shift those just into the mini fridge itself. There we go. Excellent. And if we go to control, we are going to turn on the fridge. And the fridge should be running. Uh, so it is going to run for four hours until it is empty. So this isn't a massive battery. Um, we're going to have to keep that in mind. That it takes a little bit for this uh, fridge to work. But it should keep things from going off. It's not a freezer, mind you. But uh, yeah, it'll keep our perishable goods around for just that little bit longer. Uh, looks like we actually had some perishable goods here as well because of the drinks, I believe. So we'll see if we can't uh, stash them in there as well. Mayonnaise. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and just move you across and straight up into the air. Thank you. Ketchup and mayonnaise, fantastic. Okay, so we could try and cook something up here because, well, we have the stove and everything. And you know what? I think we're going to go and grab these little uh, kitchen supplies that we have here. And we're going to go and just put them underneath the kitchen unit because that's where we're going to be using them. The frying pan, the stock pot, etc. And um, we don't have to cook in here. We can cook outside. And I think that's probably what we're going to try and do. However, can I fit you? And by you, I mean this big thing of water. Am I going to be able to fit you? Well, we could actually put it put it into this we could build it into this tank and you know what I think that's what we're gonna, yeah let, what the hell let's do it examine the vehicle let's see if we can't install this tank of water ah we won't be able to because the tank I think needs to be empty first so yeah I guess we'll just have to accept that for now but we might be able to put it underneath of here Ah, uh, no it is full okay so that's a negative on the waterfront um, as I would like to try and get some in our um, canteen, which, you know what, I don't know if we actually have one on us at the moment. Yes, we do. We actually do. And the good thing about Dusk is that we can't accidentally eat our canteen. So, yeah, there you go. The things that you say in the cataclysm. Uh, let's just leave that out here for now. And we're just going to drag this water outside with us. We've got a little bit of sunlight left, so we'll see if we can't use it to make some nice fresh water for us. So clean water to begin with and we're going to go and make eight units because we'll drink some okay we don't have anything to store it uh we certainly do though we have our canteens so that's fine we're going to consume two units of that and we're going to pour the rest into our canteen just like so some nice clean hot water which i am happy about uh let's just go and wield our umbrella for now telescoping umbrella Excellent. And we could try and cook ourselves something fresh. We could make a vegetable salad. You know what? I think that's actually great. Sure, let's do it. We can just make one. And we'll go ahead and store that in our inventory for now, unfortunately. Ah. Again, making mistakes. I guess we need to have both of our hands free to be able to work on this. That's fine. We'll go ahead and activate. Yes, we'll have to wield us. And that's fine. We will... Just have to deal with the sun, and we will eat our salad for now. Lovely. Yeah, all the rest is just going to have to stay in there for now. Uh, hoping that it's going to be okay while we leave it. Yeah, we're in minimal pain because of the uh, sunshine. And uh, yeah, I wasn't actually planning on bringing our vehicle, but I think it's going to be worthwhile for us to have that as we head out there. I'm just going to go ahead and activate our quiver real quick to store some more ammunition. There we are. Yes, we should be good to go. We've got everything that we need to go on a adventure, albeit a small one. And uh, you know what? There's a strong chance that we might end up actually either sleeping or resting up near the radio tower. Purely because we're going to want to be up there in daylight. It's going to give us the best chance to see. So, yeah, we'll probably try and sleep in this thing at night. Let's just hope that it's going to stay together for a little bit longer. Oh, wow. Okay, we went to being very hungry quite quickly. All right, I guess we'll stop that for now. And uh, we'll just go and have, have a munch on these here. We've got some cooked corn dogs. Yes, okay. We've got some raspberries that are good. I feel like we should be good to go here. We've got a lot of fresh food still, but uh, yeah. Some of this, I think, is going to be extended by the fridge, which is currently on, so yeah. Three minutes until full, so it's filling back up at the stage, so cross our fingers that everything is going to be okay with that as we uh, reverse on out of here, and we'll start heading up in this direction. Um, I've just made a little bit of an oversight, and I've just realized that now. We should be responsible. We're going to stop driving uh, as soon as we actually stop the vehicle. <laughs> we'll leave it here for a second. We're going to just head back inside and grab some extra batteries for our headlamp, because that will definitely be necessary. So the headlamp, we want to go ahead and reload you with uh, yeah, just some of the disposables, and we'll just drop the other batteries for now. Much safer, in my opinion. 
And I'm actually glad that I remembered that now. And uh, yeah, so we're down one solar panel from what we had before, but I think that's going to be fine. I think we've still got more than enough in the way of energy stored inside this vehicle. Let's see how we do. There we go. Just dealing some glare over here. And we're going to be making our way across the river for the first time. We'll see what um, state this bridge is in. Quite a few of these abandoned structures now. These old rustic barns are standing as silent sentinels. Hello, you're a regular moose. Well, that's interesting, and I'm glad that you're around here. And ha, huh, look at that. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> well, the road comes to an end, and it ends in a lab of all places. Wow, okay. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. So we have an underground lab just here, and we have another lab <laughs> just across the river. Wow. And uh, a lot of ducks, apparently. Ducks and beavers and uh, just all kinds of wildlife. They seem to be doing quite well out here, mind you. Which, uh, yeah, that's nice. Bridges always seem to have quite a few vehicles on them, but this, <laughs> this is just one. Not half bad. And uh, yeah, here we find ourselves at a science lab. And it's actually got a different kind of look and feel to it, surprisingly enough. Yeah. Interesting. Let's just go and just park up here for a moment. Ah, I see. Very interesting. I have not seen a lab look like this from the outside. So this is maybe a slightly different or a new design. Okay, we can we can kind of open right. Of course, because, like, yeah, it makes sense that they have, like, a little bit of... Oh! Oh, my God. Holy... I'm really glad sometimes that they're... I'm not doing face cam anymore, because... <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. That was a reaction. That was a reaction and a half. Okay, so, yeah, we're hearing some very loud gunshots from beneath of here. Uh, yeah, okay, so, hmm, all right, let's make sure there's nothing too interesting over here, we've got some batteries, sure, and, uh, let's go ahead and steal some batteries from this radio. There don't seem to be any living folks guarding this place, which, uh, you know, seems to be the standard, and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just knock back one of those aspirins in the desk. We're hearing hostile detected. There's definitely machines down here. And uh, do we have any science ID cards on us? I don't believe we do, unfortunately. Uh, so there isn't too much that we can do about that. Uh, we can attempt to hack it, though. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's what we want to be doing right now because uh, we have failed that before and it does lock us out. Let's see what we've got over here. We have sewing techniques for designers. Ah, very nice. And machinery's handbook. Damn, these are actually some pretty useful books by the looks of things. Self-esteem for dummies. We haven't read that yet. <laughs> we might need it. And uh, so let's just have a little bit of a, a quick flick. Okay, you know what? Let's um, let's read through the stuff outside. I feel like that's probably a, a better call. Yeah, because we're going to have to leave this stuff in the car anyway. So we'll just sit in the back of the, the boot. Sewing techniques. Kiting, chitin horse armor. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. And self-esteem for dummies. So, uh, let's see. That's not going to help us at all. Um, so, yeah, I want to go ahead and just throw these away. So we'll just store that in our inventory for now. Throw that over there. The machinery's handbook. Throw that over there as well. Close that up for now. Uh, well, I guess we could go ahead and drop the book in there to begin with, and the batteries. So yeah, do we want to try and hack this thing? Well, look, I wasn't anticipating finding a lab. The fact that this one here is, that gives us a chance maybe to get the weaponry that we need to be able to 
do some good stuff. However, here's where my, my, my brain's going now. If we don't have a science ID card and we go into this thing, there is a strong chance that there's going to be a turret right there. We can't outshoot a turret, unfortunately. We've got an acetylene torch, so we can actually try and cut through I, as well. I think we can cut through these doors with our torch. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's an option as well. If we hack it, I wonder if we can... Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about stuff here. Yeah. Honestly, I think for now, we stick to the plan. We come back to the lab, though. We definitely come back to the lab. But I'm hoping, you know, maybe we'll find some scientists along the way. There's a chance we could find an ID card there. I just think, for the time being, we'll stick to what we originally intended to do. A bit of a wide swing around there. So yeah, we're going to have to travel through the open field, which I'm not super keen on. Just because minefields. But yeah, we're going to try and find our way down towards this, uh... Shipwreck. Because who knows, maybe the ship was, uh, heading up stream here towards the goddamn lab. Shipping supplies or people or who knows? Who knows what? Um, are those lilies? They are. Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. Just around we go. Avoiding boulders where possible because they hurt. Shrubs are okay sometimes in small doses. And I think that's the last of the little swampy terrain for us to go around. Good. Okay. And that looks like a... Hmm. Maybe radiation could have done that. We're down near the water now. Okay. Do I want to be... Razor Claw? Okay. We spotted something. It's flashing. It's hostile. Let's see. Razor Claw. A man-sized crustacean clad in iron-like chitin, capable of emitting the most horrible of shrieks, often spotted near shipwrecks or other dark, damp places, which it uses as nesting grounds. Okay. Cool. You're new. <laughs> At least to dusk you are. Let's go ahead and take out our bow. Has this... Okay. I, th I think we're seeing a few. I'm just looking at our map now. So, raise the claw here. We've got a few fish just hanging out in tiny ponds. That's cool. Yes, there is a razor claw up here as well. Hmm. Yeah, don't know if I like that. Okay. And another one down here as well. So three, and they are just currently tracking. Now that one should theoretically be able to see us. I don't know if you can. Oh, you have seen us now, and I think you're hostile towards us. Yes, you most certainly are. So let's see, where do we need to get you to? To that point there. So let's just zoom out a little bit further, just so that we can actually see where that point is. Okay, so it's just past that little section up here. Come on, take a step closer. Come on. Come on. Are you not going to come any closer? It's it's just it's kind of going between it, it is hostile, but Yeah, all three of them are. Oh, wow, there's a lot of them around here. I don't know about this. I kind of want to know what we're dealing with here though. We need to go one step closer. Oh, yeah, I feel like we're seeing a lot of um a lot of them down this way. Yeah, that's uh, that's 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 quite something. So, with the amount of them that are here, it would make me think that they, while it seems like they are quite strong, maybe they're not. I could be entirely wrong, but I think it's going to be good for us to know. We can hear just this kind of shrieking sound as we let an arrow rip through the air. It makes contact, but it doesn't do a huge amount. As we draw back yet another arrow, we get ready to let that loose. A grazing hit. It reflects off the chitinous hide of the creature. We take another precise shot, this one just going completely wide. 
and should I should just be doing a precise shot at the moment now, but it doesn't seem to work the same way. Misses. Okay. And this thing is just staying back. Precise shot. Again, misses. Right, I guess we are at the extreme end of our range here. Oh, this is no, no, this is not what we want. That is not what we want. That is, uh... That's a lot. They're all uninjured. They're shrieking and dazed. I mean, we are a, b a beast in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but if this thing has, you know, really quite decent, um... Armor, we're not going to be able to pierce through that. Not with just our fingernails. Yes, we will ignore that for now. Uh, yeah, we are not doing a great job with our bow at the moment. Uh, I want to see if I can get close enough to get some of our arrows back. Ignore. Ignore. Just pick them back up. It doesn't seem to be that interested in us. For whatever reason. Maybe that's a good thing. It seems to be missing a lot. It just killed a sunfish. I mean, they're just... They're, there are so many of them here, but they're just moving through. Just... Yeah. Killing all of the fish around here. And I'm guessing that is the shipwreck. Holy crap, there's a lot of them. Just constantly going between states of being hostile and not hostile. Okay, well, you know what? This does make me want to investigate more. But at the same time, I feel like with the numbers that are there, maybe it'd be better to be just a little bit safer and just, you know, ignore them for now. Because for whatever reason, they seem to be just doing their own thing. So that's, uh, yeah, let's let them do that. And we will do our own thing and try and make our way in the direction of that radio tower still. Because we can make it. We have the technology. And we'll start to step on that gas a little bit more. Okay, we ran over something. And, okay, we've got some crates down here. Yes, we do. Okay, so... That can be a really good thing for us because I've found explosives in these before. All kinds of things because they, I believe, have been dropped by the military at some point. Sunlight is still irritating us, so let's just get that back out. And uh, we're hydrated. Do I want to drink whatever this is? It's an open can, so no. Let's see if we can't open this up and an MBR vest with ceramic plates. Nice. It's not going to be as good as the one that we have. Ooh, MRE and some codeine. Now all I need to do is just hit E and it opens. And sure enough, C4 explosive. Yes, please. Smoke bomb is... Yeah. I mean, maybe if we're in a pinch and we need to try and stop something from seeing us. Yeah, I mean, grenade. Yes, please. So yeah, these were definitely dropped by the military at some point. Okay, and we've got some water purification tablets. I mean, yeah, I guess we could drop it into something. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I am on board with this. Let's get this thing started up again, and we are going to continue on towards here. So I think we're going to have to go around, actually. What, are you, what is this? A toxic waste dump. Hmm, okay. Interesting. So we've got two options here. I think it might be better for us to just park the car here on the forest trail, and then try and make our way on foot towards the radio tower through the swamp but I also kind of think that we're going to have to uh, just sleep in our car until morning which we're not going to be able to do because we have uh, slept throughout the entire day so <laughs> yeah really not the best use of our uh, time I think let's see looks like there might have been a forest fire here at some point but this I think is the start of this little forest trail uh, we could have a look at the toxic waste dump to see what's kind of going on up there but I think it would be smarter for us to leave our vehicle for the time being yeah we'll, we'll head along the forest trail to go and check that out which um well it's a it's a <laughs> it's not exactly the most visible trail I suppose Ah, here we go. There we go. I can actually see it a little bit better now. Yeah. It's kind of winding its way through here. Just, just wandering with our umbrella out. 
doing our thing. And I think at some point this is going to switch and start turning to the north. The last little bit of light has left us and uh, with that we'll go and put the umbrella away. Yeah, so we could just head directly north from here and I'm probably going to do that because following the trail isn't going to help us all that much. We're going to have to wade through some of the water. Most of it is going to be shallow. We're just looking out for any kind of sinkholes or anything like that that could uh, cause this issue. And it's not a clear night. Because we are not seeing much at all. But we're getting closer to this place. Interesting that it's just a forest trail that kind of leads up towards it. There we go. We can see better. And we can see the edge of this dump. Okay. <laughs> okay, we've got some magazines. And oh, what is that up there? Steel drums? Hmm. Hmm. Right, okay. Well look, we don't want to be here for that long because this is this is sewage that's here. I think sewage is okay, but um Oh, can we not open this? Oh we can. Ah, it was it was locked. It is not anymore. Wrapped radiation badge. You know what? We're gonna go ahead and unwrap that thing right now. <clears throat> and we'll actually wear it, if possible. No we can't? Okay, well we'll go ahead and activate it regardless. Unwrap the badge. <clears throat> Exposing it to ambient radiation. Okay, so let's just check in on that thing and see how it's doing immediately. Because uh, there could be radioactive elements here. Um, activate. Can't do anything interesting with it. Uh, we can examine it, but uh, I don't think we're going to see anything from it yet. Possibly. It does say clothing, so I think we can wear it now. There we go. Okay. Right, well, we'll let that do its thing. We'll take the first aid kit, definitely. And Engineering 301, let's just have a quick flick through that, and I think that is going to be useful to us. Actually, no, it isn't. There isn't a single thing in there that we don't already have access to. Wow. Makeshift steam engine, jackhammer, and all the rest. We know a thing or two, it would seem. And obviously that just opens up back this way. Restricted area, authorized personnel only. Okay. Well, yeah, let's not... Let's not hang around here. That is uh, disturbing. And, well, they can be used to make mutagens, which is, again, quite disturbing. But yeah, let's just head in the direction of this radio tower, I think, at this point. Um, and we can pretty much do that by just moving like this. Uh, trying not to dive into water, where we can avoid it. Another thing that we can do is we can actually double click on the map and what that will do is it'll navigate us to that point and usually the safest route possible so that's one way for you to be able to navigate through woods and stuff like that where you've got you know a lot of very intricate ways to walk around but honestly for the most part we can just walk through here without too much trouble we could run into something horrible in the woods at night but uh <laughs> Generally speaking, at this stage, dusk is one of the more horrible things to run into. So I'm not as concerned with her just running through here. But I do like how thick and how developed the woods are now, compared to how they were in the past. Like, we've got these great big sections that have been burnt down. It's just cool. There's more of a story to the environment around us. And that radio tower is certainly getting closer. Just a little bit more to... Ah, here we are. And there it is. Okay, so I haven't been to a radio tower like this, but uh, we're going to start making our way up as best we can. And climb we do. Make our way up the stairs not sure what we're going to be able to actually make out and this is this is at the very top at this stage i think we're quite a few levels up and ooh, survi oh <laughs> survivor's telescope okay a homemade telescopic uh collapsible telescope <laughs> too large and inaccurate to use as a weapon scope but by carrying this wall double your distance so it kind of works like the binoculars. I don't know how they work compared to each other, but yeah, we're going to take the ammunition. We're going to take the survivor's map, 
which will tell us where all the gun stores and gas stations are. Yeah, let's just see if we can't... So I think, is that a safe over here? No, there's still some more ammunition there as well. And there's some more ammunition. Weird. There, there was, there's quite a lot of ammunition there. It was just in different um, packets, I guess. Yeah, so someone was sniping off the top of this thing, it seems like, at some point. Or other, maybe they intended to come back here. Maybe they still will. I mean, we're just standing on top of this thing, looking out over this huge swampland with a headlamp on, so we're kind of a beacon <laughs> at this stage. So yeah, come the morning, we're going to be able to see a whole heap of things around here. Yeah, we're many levels up. We can just see the open air to the side. Well, look, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and activate the survivor's map. As we look out across the landscape around us, let's see what points are now on. So, gun stores. There's quite a few of them up here. Uh, other things that have been marked are gas stations as well. Grocery stores, nice. Quite a few of them scattered around. Gas station all the way down here. Okay. I mean, gun stores were what I was interested in. We do actually have one back down here in West Windsor, which is where we started this all off, or rather, underneath West Windsor. So, yes. Hmm. Okay, well, we are going to have to try and find some way to spend the evening. Or rather, even just waiting. And waiting is something that we can do in this game, and I think we might just have to try and do it, really. Um, there isn't too much that we can do. I am going to go and just throw the map off the side. There we go. And it should just uh, start floating down. Let's just have a look at our survivor telescope and the binoculars of ours. A pair of binoculars. So, let's just see. Obviously, we can't compare too many things here, but the volume of the survivor telescope is less. So, we can use the binoculars to focus the sunlight to start a fire, um, and it doubles the distance. So, it does the exact same thing. However, uh, we can wear the binoculars. Yeah, it does. It will encumber our torso a little bit. Uh, whereas the telescope, I think, is just better because it, uh, well, it just weighs less in general, and it does the same thing. Yeah. I think we're going to stick with the telescope, really. Even though the pair of binoculars seem to be, um, you know, they, they're worth a lot more. Can we activate the survivor's telescope? Oh, we can also light fire. So, I mean, there you go. Hmm. Yeah. Let's go ahead and turn this light off for now. It's chilly. But, um... We'll see if we can't just lay down on the ground and have a little bit of a nap. I somehow doubt that we'll be able to. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait a while. Um, it's 9pm at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and wait three hours. I'm going to try and sleep again. And I'll tell you what, I will rejoin you when dawn is upon us. Okay, it's about 12.30 past midnight we are tired at the moment we are very hungry uh so we could look at having one of the mres that we have with us um we could go for chili and macaroni so to do that i think we're gonna have to disassemble it so let's go disassemble okay several items are on the ground we want to go ahead and activate one of the heat packs that are there okay use and we are going to use that on our entree here so we're going to make it nice and warm for us to eat and then we'll eat our chili and macaroni entree. Should hopefully be delicious. Um, I don't know if we can have the cheese spread on the cracker. But we can kind of have them together. As you would. We can have some clean water. You know what, let's go for some of the dark cola. Yeah. Nice. Okay, with that. Do we want to go into the dessert pack? No, I think we'll just keep those as they are. And we'll see if we can't sleep try to at the very least and no we are going to get quite cold up here which is the unfortunate thing but i'm confident that we're going to be able to push you you can see our head has taken a little bit of damage but we'll keep trying 
and I'll report back in the morning. All right, we have awoken, and you might notice that our head is in a very, very bad condition. And that comes from sleeping outside at night with, uh, without proper protection. Yeah, so we did have a scarf and a few other things before, which would have been really nice for us to have with us. But unfortunately, we didn't bring those things with us. And uh, yeah, yeah, thankfully, Dawn is here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just put this over us because, yeah, we are feeling incredibly cold and hypothermic. So we're going to need to try and just wait in the sun, warm ourselves back up. We are very hungry again. So before we have a look at the map or do anything else, we're going to have uh, some of the dessert pack that we had. So we'll go ahead and disassemble you and eat what we can of that. So let's see what we've got. We've got a cookie. Fantastic. We've got some dehydrated fruit. It's going to quench us a little bit, but uh, yeah. That will help improve our mood. And then some nice clean water. See if we can't get hydrated. Well, close to. Slaked and full. That's good. Now, using a bandage here, it's not a wound, but it is going to help us heal. So we're definitely going to need to. And I think I might even try and apply some disinfectant beforehand, even though it's, you know, it's not a wound in that sense. This is going to help us recover a lot faster. And uh, yeah, I was 100% concerned with seeing how low that was getting. But uh, here we are. It is the morning, and I think we should be able to see a whole distance from here. Let's see if we go down. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, we can't actually see that far. So I'm going to go ahead and just wait a little bit more time here, if we can. Let's just go wait five minutes for now. Okay, I'm just wanting to make sure that we aren't getting any more damage while we're here. Oh, we seem to be okay. That's another half an hour. It's 8.30. I kind of want to try and wait until maybe 9. So we'll just go ahead and wait for a whole hour. Our mouth is still feeling quite cold. Alright, so yeah, we've got, we've got our full vision. So we don't really seem to be seeing much else around here. Unfortunately, I was really hoping we'd get better sight of the region and maybe we will we might just have to go down first it might be that we're actually just too high to really show us some things and yeah i think now we have now it's kind of working here we go wow okay so we can see very far from the top of this radio tower We've got a cabin out this way here and we have this is, this is, uh, yeah, that's a whole ranch. Very close to us here. And then a radiation plant. Interesting. We've got some silos off to the side here. I'm just trying to look for new things that I haven't seen before. Really quite a large gas station over here by Castle Hill and Dexter. Norwell, I'm thinking that's a big... That's a football field. Right, okay. What have we here? A beehive. A ginormous beehive on the outskirts of Watley, Dunstable, and Belgrade. Nice gun store here. Off this way, we've got a survivor's camp. Just north of Watley, so maybe we can see some smoke rising in the distance from, you know, those distant campfires. People out there. Actual people. That is, uh... That's something. Whether or not they're approachable people, because I mean, Dusk has dealt with people before. She's had to kill people. The ones that uh, aren't so kind. Got a large regional dump. And uh, yeah, it's looking out this way here. I don't think we're gonna see much further than we have so far. But yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with how far we can actually see. I'm going to just go back up one again, just to see if there's any difference at all. I, I don't think there is. I think it's pretty much the same amount that we're going to see regardless. But yeah, I'm very happy that we came up here because this gives us a lot of uh, just, yeah, oversight to everything that's around us. And I got to admit, that survivor camp, it's kind of calling to me. And we can make it to that. It's a, it's a bit of a drive, but we can make it to that. 
maybe we'll be able to get help. Help that will help us help <laughs> these other people. Yeah. Then again, in the state that we're in, is that the best idea? The radiation plant is something that I have not seen before. And that's not too far. Maybe we could investigate that. Well, first thing we need to do is start climbing down from this place though. Making our way down just bit by bit. Lower and lower. There we go. <laughs> and there's the map that we threw all the way down here. And there is actually a road that leads all the way up to this place. Close it back up. And hopefully our head is going to start recovering while we're out here. Yeah, we're going to follow this road. And uh, we are going to have a, a bit of a look at that irradiation plant to see exactly what's going on there. We don't have to go all the way into it, but um, I at least want to get something of an idea of what's out there. That lab is also beckoning to me as well. I'm hoping that this irradiation plant might be somewhere that... Uh, ooh, we've actually got a trail over here that leads there. That, yeah, some of the scientific folk could have been based at. Chance to find some of those ID cards. I'll take a shot at that. We will be double-checking our badge before we go in. To see if it is still working for us. Should be coming up on it now. Let's have a look and see. Radiation badge. Okay. We're on your appell so you can notice if it changes. Can't do anything interesting with it. Uh, from the north, we hear kaboom. Just this loud explosion coming off between, you know, probably from new fields, maybe even by the radiation plant and this ranch that's here. The ranch is somewhere else that we might be able to just stop into because who knows, we could have people there. Ooh, this place is... Uh, pretty well protected just yeah barbed wire fences around the outside of it wood chips okay <laughs> and we're hearing lots of explosions and an alarm going off in the distance as well this is all coming from the northwest which is kind of in the direction that we're walking at the moment don't know if that's a great thing we still can't see too... Uh, I was going to say we can't see too much, but we are seeing blood. Scraps of flesh. Up against the wall. Of this irradiation plant. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. We spotted a bulldog, which has spotted us. And there's another one just to our side here, but... We heard a, a gunshot ring out then, and I thought it might have been coming for us. But no, I think it was actually going for that bulldog. Okay. Alright, can't take any chances here. We're going to drop the telescoping umbrella. Uh, I want to see if we can get our holster out. We're just going to take a shot at this. It is nearly dead. Okay. Alright. Didn't want to have to do it, pup, but you kind of made me. Same thing with you. The dog is just charging towards us. It's a good hit. It's turning, it's running, but we can't have that stalking us here. Okay. Ah. Oh. We'll holster it. That bulldog was nearly dead, and I'm afraid it was being shot by something over here, maybe. There could be turrets at this place. If that's the case, we need to just get down low. So that we might stand a better chance at not being seen. But I also want to see what's going on over there. It could have just been a combination of things. We could have just heard that sound coming from... Over there. And, uh... Yeah. I'll be honest though, I feel quite nervous. I don't know if coming to this place with our head so weak. 
Okay, yeah, no, we are seeing a turret. We're seeing two turrets, and we can hear them screaming out hostile detected. Yeah, this place has... Yeah, no, this is... This is... Yeah. We're gonna... We're gonna use the tree line to break line of sight. Okay, yeah. It is well protected. Well, well protected. There are turrets outside of it. Okay, so that's somewhere for us to look at. But not today. <laughs> not today. Not while, you know... Our head is still in such a bad condition. Oh, wolves. They might have heard the gunshots. Maybe. We could try and shout to scare them off. We're going to go ahead and activate our holster. We're going to keep this pistol out in our hands. And we're actually going to stand up now. We're not going to step into the rose bush. If those wolves come for us, it's their... It's their choice. Let's just keep the gun out in our hand. Okay, they seem to be staying away for now. Maybe they're not hungry enough. Maybe we just look intimidating enough. We're approaching a ranch. Time to see if this thing is occupied or not. Okay. So far, it doesn't seem to be. get a little closer again we're just gonna make sure that we uh, keep this weapon out just in case let's actually just go crouched here door is open peeking inside no one's home lessons of the novice bow hunter peek around here I'm just gonna turn on our flashlight okay seemingly no one home so far sports drink in there Let's just take this duct tape. Stand up. Just some bricks. And some canned meat. Okay. Peek around the corner. No one's in the bedroom. This is all boarded up. Winter coat. We're not chilly anymore. Okay. Hmm, interesting. No one's home, it seems. Now, this ranch, and ranches like it, are used... Well, we've seen them used before. Dusk has actually been to a ranch very similar to this. And I think it's going to be reminiscent of the ranch that she was helping. The ranch that was being set up. That uh, housed survivors. Maybe this camp is where this regions are again things are similar yet still different for her okay we've got a tractor in here seems to be working or rather in okay condition i'm gonna go ahead and just take this duct tape because right now no one seems to be here that will need it and check out this other building okay there's a sheep in here and we have cattle fodder. Pig. Okay. All right. Is that a? That's that. That's a horse. That is a horse. Okay. Can I befriend you, horse? <laughs> I don't know how, but it's possible. It's currently. Ignoring us. Um, maybe if we use cattle fodder. So what I've been able to find so far, let's hold to this first. <laughs> if we have a survival skill of four or higher, we should be able to ride this thing without a saddle. However, we're going to need some cattle fodder, I think, first to see if we can't tame our friend here so let's see yes I don't know if I can just immediately give it to you or not I know you might be a little bit afraid let's see we don't want to consume can I not examine it's examining to the side 
Okay, can I... Can I feed you with it if I activate it? Cattle fodder. Place. Put the cattle fodder here. Horse seems to like you. It lets you pat its head and it seems friendly. Okay. What to do with your horse? <laughs> okay. Okay. This could work. Um, so... We're too heavy to mount the horse, and I think it's because of the bag that we have. So what if we attach our bag, our hiking backpack, to the horse? Some of the items tumble to the floor. Okay, so, <laughs> kinda doesn't work. We can mount it without it. Remove bag from horse. Okay, so yeah, we, we're carrying a bit too much stuff at this stage, but we can frickin' ride this horse. Okay, let's just grab everything off the floor. Because, yeah, we, we do have a fair amount on us. Our weight is... Our weight at the moment is 45 kgs. So that's not terrible, but that's 45 kgs including us as well. So we're probably like another, you know, 55, 60 kgs on top of that. So it's it's a fair amount of weight for that horse to be able to, uh, yeah, deal with. But we have a... We have a horse. We have a horse. Equip horse of armor. We don't have any armor for the horse, but, yeah... Who would have thunk it? We have a horse that we can, uh... Are you gonna follow me? Yeah, you just, you, you just follow me now. I think you are, right? Yeah, you seem to be following me. Well, <laughs> okay. We have a horse that's just following us now. Um, I, we don't have a name for this horse yet. We are going to need to... Actually, you know what? I know what we're gonna call this horse. Candy. Yeah, an old friend. A way to remember them, at the very least. So, dusk and candy, once again. Let's go ahead and open this thing up here and see if there's anything of interest. Uh, looks like we've just got some hay. And, is that locked? Interesting. Let's unlock it. I'm just gonna, oh, so it's like a grain silo. Yeah, okay, that's fine. It's all good, just wanted to be sure. Um, see if there isn't anything else here. Step ladder. Okay, there might be some other things that could help us with riding. Or if there was something for our horse to be able to, uh, hold on to. Is that a toolbox? It is. It's a goddamn toolbox. Holy shit. Okay, look at this thing. Look how much it weighs. Look at the volume. But look at all the things it does. It does everything. Tree cutting, butchering, cutting, hammering, prying. So, and, and bolt turning, everything. So what we can do now is we can go wrench, don't need ya. Scalpel, that's fine cutting, so we might still need ya. Um, let's see, uh, multi-tool, still pretty good, but the toolbox is gonna do everything that can do. Makeshift sure crowbar, you can go hammer, you can go, um, yeah, so that's gonna free up some weight, which is nice. And then we can grab this toolbox, which, um, uh, yeah, so it doesn't have fine cutting, so I think it's good that we hold on to it for that reason. But, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's very, very good. Toolboxes are fantastic tools. Apparently the pig isn't exactly happy with us, but, you know, what can you do? But this horse most certainly is. Candy. Candy the horse. Uh, what is it that we have over here? Let's just turn this on real quick. Got a chicken. Okay. Got ourselves a shovel. And, uh, fungicide, I see. Okay. Right, well, I would love to be able to ride this horse back, so I think it's worth us investigating how much we can actually... Yeah. How much we have to drop to be able to make this work. So let's just go into our inventory really quick, and let's just see if we can't uh, filter it or sort it by weight. So we don't want to filter. We want to uh, go slash. No, not what we want to do. Uh, sort S... No, I'm just, I, I'm being dumb right now. Right, okay, yes, sort by weight. Okay, so the acetylene torch is the, yeah, is the heaviest. We actually have more of those back at home, so we could probably get away with not carrying them. Smoke bombs, we don't desperately need, so we can go ahead and drop them for now. The first aid kit, we, I mean, we could get away with leaving that behind. We've already got lots of, a decent amount of first aid supplies. I mean, if we... Yeah. Ideally, we'd be able to hold on to it. Like, how, how close are we? What if what if we dropped the torch? What then? 
still not enough. Yeah, so we do need a we do need a bit, it would seem. Yeah. How much more then? How much more would we have to drop? How much more would we have to get rid of? Drop another smoke bomb. I drop the accessories pack. It's not gonna be very heavy though, is the only thing. The plastic bottles and all the rest. The water purification tablets we don't really need to hold on to. Yeah, still not enough, huh? That 37 kgs, maybe if it was like under 30, we might be able to make that work. But it's just, we do have quite a lot of stuff on us. Um, yeah. Let's have one last look again. Drop the toolbox for a second. Okay, so we need to get rid of about 3 kgs, give or take. So let's take the toolbox back and see if we can't do that. The first aid kit, we can go ahead and just leave that behind for now. I'm fine with that. Same thing with the duct tape. We can probably leave behind a few of those. Uh, the C4 we definitely want. And I thought I dropped a mask for a second then. Settling torch, accessories pack. All those things I'm okay with us having dropped. Let's see. Can we ride you now? We can. And just like that, we mount our steed. We are now... Yeah, here we are. And we're just at a walking pace at the moment, but... Yeah. <laughs> I imagine we can probably run quite fast. Uh, okay. That's great. That's really freaking good. I'm very happy about this. Now, I do want to return back towards our vehicle, return back towards home, and ideally find a way into that lab. Uh, we have just left the acetylene torch here. Um, you know what? We might be able to get away with just taking one of the tanks from that. Is that possible? Maybe. Let's see. Can we not grab? We can't pick anything up while you're riding. Okay. Well, uh, I guess that's... I guess that's that. Oh, no. We've got the welding tank. Look at us go. Look at us go. Okay. Let's just start, like, running for a bit here and just see what speed we can kind of get to. Okay. 71. Our, our speed is 98 at the moment. Which I... Yeah. I mean, our speed, it must be pretty good. Yeah. Not half bad got a lot of pigs out here yeah so we're going to be wrapping things up for today's episode but in the next we are going to attempt to make it out towards the survivor camp to see if we can maybe make contact with some people before trying to return home yes worst case scenario we are going to try and hit up one of these gun stores so that we might be able to get more ammunition more weaponry to be able to take on the encampment that's down here because there's still so many people stuck there we can't leave them but maybe yeah just maybe we can get some help from others this horse well we're not gonna be able to attach it to a carrier or if we had a carrier we'd be able to attach it to our vehicle we might just have to kind of do two trips here because i would love to get candy back home but for now that is all if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a like or a comment to let me know if you enjoyed the show. I've been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.